The next misconception that we want to address is, is your system vulnerable to viruses, worms, and other malware that attack other computing systems? To help illustrate the growth and the extensiveness of the virus problem, this is the global virus map. The red areas indicate the areas where more than 1,000 active viruses have been found in the last 30 days. That is, most of the world more than 1,000 active viruses over the last 30 days. So there certainly is a virus problem. The issue is, do we have that problem with the IBM I? Now, the common misconception is that the IBM I is not susceptible to any type of PC, virus, worm, or any kind of malware like that. That basically, we don't need no stinking virus protection on this machine. Now, let's take a look at an IBM technical document. IBM came out with this a couple of years ago, and the title of this technical document is Viruses, the Operating System, and the Integrated File System. And I just want to read a couple of paragraphs from this. The operating system is not susceptible to PC virus attacks. That should say enough, right? Viruses attack a specific computer architecture. The architecture of the IBM System I makes it highly unlikely that a virus could be written to attack it. PC-based viruses will not infect or run on the operating system. So that solves the issue. So it's not vulnerable to attack. But as I go on to the next paragraph in the document, Although the operating system cannot be infected by a PC virus, if the integrated file system on the operating system is used as a file server for PC files, the files stored on the integrated file system may carry viruses. Uh-oh. An infected file that is moved or saved from a PC to the integrated file system and then redistributed to another PC can transmit a virus to the new PC. Likewise, if a network drive is mapped to the integrated file system, a virus running on a PC and which is capable of damaging files on a network drive can damage any file stored on the integrated file system. So, uh-oh we do have an issue in the integrated file system. Not in the QSYS file system, but in the integrated file system, the root file system, we do have issues. The main exposures that we have in the IFS come from our shared network drives that we map with NetServer. And I tell you, as I've looked at different systems, I've seen many times where people store all kinds of things out in the root file system. I've seen movies of you know different videos. I've seen people keep uh, photographs, image libraries of uh, strange things. And it just becomes a big terabyte network drive that people can store things on, and they do. And that is susceptible also to viruses, worms, and those other complaints that we can get in those files. What about if we're using the IBM I as a POP3 mail server? Any of those mail server attachments that come into the system can be infected with malware. If we're running Domino, also mail server attachments can be a problem there. How about if somebody wants to purposely put a virus on the machine, you can actually purposely transmit to the IFS using FTP or using a mapped drive to infect the machine. Yes, the IFS can be a virus carrier that can further infect computers on the network. So that's really the reality that we do have an issue in the integrated file system. Now, if you don't use PCs and you don't have mapped drives, uh, maybe it's not a big issue. But most of us use the integrated file system for all kinds of things, including updates for IBM I Access for Windows. We use it for storing Excel spreadsheets. We use it for storing documents, images, all kinds of things. And when that's the case, that shared network drive is just like any other network drive in that it can contain viruses and worms and other malware. IBM has jumped on this problem and they've actually added two new system values to support native scanning of the integrated file system. They've also added two exit points to support the scanning. The system values that are set up to control the IFS scanning environment are QScanFS and QScanFS Control. Together those two allow you to set up the environment for IFS scanning. The exit points supported allow you to actually scan an object when it's opened 
or when it's closed. That way, not only can we just scan the IFS to find out if there's viruses there, but we can actually see in real time and know in real time when a virus file is opened. Now, certain IBM business partners have integrated native virus scanners that are available, and I encourage you to take a peek at some of those commercial virus scanners.